So welcome to this first video which is going to discuss about business intelligence. Before we get into the meat of the product um, and discussing how we set up business intelligence, it's quite important to understand um, an overview of what it is we're trying to achieve and, and why we're achieving it. Um, so in this brief video we're just going to discuss some of the key um, top level um, points about business intelligence. So I've split this into a series of different sections, um, just a basic introduction as to where we are and what we're trying to achieve, um, what is business intelligence, what are the benefits of using it, why do we use it, and um, how does it work. So, where do we start? Well, we have to start somewhere. So, let's, let's take an example company that doesn't use business intelligence at the moment. Um, so, what do your senior management, your directors, your managers need um, about the business? Well, they need to understand the business, obviously, um, but that breaks into several different areas like we want to identify and exploit areas of strength, areas which aren't performing very well at all, um, identify areas of opportunity, understanding consequences of decisions, what if analysis, um, also identify staff who are doing their jobs well, identify staff who aren't doing them as well um, so we can educate them and then also identify areas of business growth. These are all key things that we want. Um, we want to do all of these things though obviously easily and efficiently and at the moment this company is just working in the old traditional manner of running a report and um, consolidating it together. That is unfortunately time consuming. So Let's take this company then that doesn't use business intelligence. They would currently use a suite of standard reports which would come from their um, live systems, their accounting packages, etc, etc. And they would probably use things like Excel and Access to consolidate that information into a meaningful report for their management team. Um, the problem is that if you needed to um, join two sides of your business together, for example, let's say we've got finance and HR, they may need to cross check each other for costings. Um, and the problem with that is it's time consuming because you would need to have someone from HR, someone from finance to sit together and bash out the report ready for their weekly, daily, monthly, yearly um, reports. Um, so it is unfortunately time consuming and we need to work smarter than that. So what do we need to do? Well, we need those same standard reports which you pull from live. We also need them to have the ability to still use Excel and Access on a daily basis. Um, but they need to be able to do this readily and um, easily um, through the analysis of data. Um, and this is where business intelligence comes in, because the idea of business intelligence is it will pull this information together into one big bubble. Um, I call it a sphere. Um, so the sphere of data, um, which everyone can get to. Um, so. If we're going to do business intelligence, we need to understand some of the key concepts. Now, the, one of the major key concepts is cubes. So what are they? Well, cubes are an analytical tool, not a reporting tool. It's strictly not true nowadays. However, I still like to use this as a way of separating between the two to get your mindset in the right place. Um, take a um, standard financial transaction report. That would be a standard report because you're looking at the individual transactions that make up a particular account or um, division. Um, in the case of cubes, what we're talking about is um, they would be analytical values. Instead of seeing the individual transactions, you would actually just see the summary of the information. So um, if you take a standard Excel file, if you try to add things together, um, you could have millions of rows of data and you're after one value. A cube stores that one value. As I say, it's not strictly true nowadays. There are other things that can be done with cubes. However, if we keep it at that basic level at this point, which is that cubes are analytical in nature and reports are transactional in nature. So business intelligence is adopted because you can then 
roll all this information up into an analytical process. Now, to give you an example, if we just look at the very bottom point here, key performance indicators, KPIs, you need to know, has my business done better this week than last week or this month from last month, this year from last year? Now, if you want to do that, you're not talking about transactions, are you? You're talking about the analytical side. You're talking about summary values. And this is where cubes really excel. Um, whereas um, a standard transactional report is time consuming. So each one of these things are very, very important to cubes. Um, so basically it's a collaboration, single point to share knowledge, reduce decision time um, and see impacts of um, specific operations like branch performance and so forth. And this is all done inside a cube very, very, very quickly as well, I may add. So what are the benefits? It provides high performance queries to get your information quickly. It supports interactive analysis over large volumes of data, again, because it's summary. Can integrate multiple data sources, multiple branches. Um, let me just expand on that a little bit. Because you're using business intelligence, you can be pulling your data from all sorts of different data sources. For example, one branch may be using Excel, another branch may be using Lotus 123. Um, they are two different spreadsheet packages. However, using business intelligence, you would consolidate this information to get um, it all into this one big sphere of data. Um, it will allow you to then do drill down on your information. You have this summary value of say 1.2 million. What is that 1.2 million? Well, by double clicking, you can drill into that information. The other advantage of business intelligence is that if you set it up properly, you don't need people to have report writing skills to actually get the information they want. They'll have things like ad hoc reporting facilities. Um, the one that comes out the box with Microsoft is called Report Builder. However, you can can also get another one that Microsoft recently acquired, which is ProClarity, to do the same job. And very, very important, the most important one of the lot is it would not affect the performance of your live system. The reason being is you're pulling your data from your live systems, generally overnight, and putting them into this sphere of data, this, this business intelligence um, domain. So we need to just talk about this in a little bit more detail. So. If we talk about that company again that doesn't use business intelligence, this is the general way that they would be reporting. They would be pulling from their live databases, producing a series of reports, and then submitting them or um, allowing the report consumer to look at that data. Or, alternatively, on an ad hoc basis, we would have the same thing again, the live database. They would use a data extract facility, such as um, comma separated values file, um, Excel access, to produce the information to then supply to the um, report consumer. Each one of those has got merits, very, very important to still have. However, the problem is, what's the downside. The downside is that you're allowing all of your different users who report to put their own sort of style on how the um, data is um, produced. Um, I'm reluctant to say this, but massaging the figures, um, they could actually look at the data in a different light to how the manager would look at it. And so using both of these typical analysis structures as we use day in, day out, it can cause us problems. And this is really one of the terms that I would like to get across, which is know, um, known as one version of the truth. Using business intelligence, you have one version of the truth because you all go to the same place, this sphere of data again, this business intelligence um, area. So we need to also understand what the difference is between analytical versus transactional reporting. Um, so these are the terms here, OLTP and OLAP. And what are the differences? Well, OLTP stands for Online Transactional Processing. Um, multiple reports are needed to ensure you get the complete picture of the business. Once the report is finished, um, the criteria is set, and you would need to rerun the report to view other areas. Um, the data is structured um, for information creation and editing. That's probably the key point there, not reporting. Um, the, the, the thing is, it's all transactional. So if I wanted to get my 1.2 million um, figure, I would have to add how many rows to get to that um, value. Um, that's not analytical. That is transactional because we're looking at line by line through the information. Analytical reporting, OLAP, stands for Online Analytical Processing, where the data is a snapshot at a 
point in time and therefore there is no impact on the live databases after the initial load and the data has been structured in such a way that it can support ad hoc reporting far better than if you use the ta st um, standard OLTP approach.